life now is definitely different. I have different hair. <laughs> my body's different. Um, my outlook on life is different. People often talk about sort of your life being, uh, you know, cancer is a gift wrapped in, in, in sandpaper. And I feel that. Um, some other people talk about it being just a gift, period, um, and it gives you sort of a deeper appreciation for your life. I already appreciated my life. I was a really happy person, and I still hope that I am still a happy person, um, but I'm sort of a work in progress right now. I've been out of treatment for active treatment for about a year now and it's definitely a journey that you go through. I have more good days than bad days and definitely less bad days than I used to have. So I just kind of keep putting one foot in front of the other and, and trying to get where I want to be and that's to reclaim my life. I'm not crazy about the word survivor because I'm surviving. I'm not a survivor. Survivors makes it sound as though it's something that's in the past and uh, I do think that everyone who has a breast cancer diagnosis and is treated for breast cancer is surviving um, you know in many cases it comes back in my case I didn't have a chance to came back it was already <laughs> it was already spread but um, hmm, I, I do like surviving better than survivor I think it's very easy for people and probably just natural to take things for granted. Um, I had perfect health up until the incident. Um, and I think that probably is pretty natural that we just, we fall into our routines and it starts to feel like this is just the way it is and we're fine. And even when we hear about bad things like breast cancer diagnoses happening to other people, you don't really think that it can happen to you. And then it does and then you can never unknow that again. Once it does happen, suddenly, for me anyway, I was just aware of how anything can happen to us at any time. Um, and I know that it did take a breast cancer diagnosis for me. Even with a family history of breast cancer that goes way, way back, um, I still don't think that I really, really felt it could happen to me, um, and certainly not at 32. Um, I don't think I'm alone in needing such a big wake-up call to really get it. I thought, I have to manage this. It taught me so much about myself, my courage, my bravery, my uh, sense of myself, and participating with the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation is a way for me to remind myself about those things and it's a way for me to say uh, I've got something to contribute, I've got knowledge, I can coach, I can mentor, I can lead and selfishly I'd like to think that in my small way I'm going to be part of a lasting legacy and that legacy is that we'll have a future without breast cancer. Who wouldn't want to participate in a foundation who has that as its goal? The only question that anybody ever asks is, how long will she live? I, 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 you know, I think that's the only question that came to my mind. And you know, uh, what is this going to do? And how long is it going to take? And what, you know, will we be able to um, overcome it? And what are the chances? And and. Those are those are the biggest things, and um, it's all of a sudden we take life for granted, and all of a sudden you know uh, you have a uh, timer in front of you, and uh, it's hard not to think of anything else. Obviously, quality of life is very important, um, but you know you're always worried about, and especially when you have, uh, and in every situation is different. But when you've got little kids, and, and you know you. Um, Tina's, Tina's biggest concern was that she'd like to be there for their weddings. I mean, how do you, uh, that's time, right? <laughs>